Hi, my name's Andy Greenwood. I'm new faculty at Meadows. I'm teaching classes at, in music history, symphonic literature and opera history. And today I wanted to just share quickly with you a problem that I've encountered and some of my colleagues have encountered too, uh, that the uh, positive impacts of technology on the one hand, but which with, with, with technology brings new challenges. And one of those challenges in music has been the availability of digital scores. Uh, and especially in the last five years, it's become very prominent. And now um, what happens now is students basically expect to get most of their scores online or as PDF scores. And this has presented a new set of challenges um, that I wanted to talk to you about and hopefully might be able to apply it to, to some of your own, uh, some of your own uh, disciplinary uh, perspectives. But in particular, one, one thing that's happened is, is scores are pretty expensive things and so they do want to get these things online. And one of the most popular sites is this uh, IMSLP site, this Petrucci Music Library. And, and this is where students go, because um, most of these scores are in the public domain. And so more and more stuff is becoming available online. Some of it's reliable, some of it's not. Uh, and some of the critical editions projects, for instance, um, are actually going this way. So we have um, uh, the Mozart edition has gone online now, which is copyrighted, but you're, you're able to download portions of it as PDFs. So it's an incredibly useful resource for, for, for my students and students in the Meadow Symphony and people who want to study uh, music in detail. Uh, but with it, this has brought some challenges. And I think that one of the challenges is that, um, and perhaps you've had this experience um, in your own courses when you make materials available online on Blackboard as PDFs, is that it's sort of a path of least resistance for the students. And, and in some ways, it almost encourages more, um, can encourage just a a sort of more passive engagement and I found this to be a bit of a problem when students do score study and so um, I've been thinking about how I can use some technology that students are interested in to perhaps uh, overcome this and uh, I got the idea to pursue this um, pursue this uh, app, uh, app um, using tablets from a student of mine early in the fall who was using it for some of his uh, some of his stuff so uh, I'll just show you what, so I was able to download a, a bit of this and the kinds of thing that you can do is, um, it's quite good using this app that probably a number of you may, may be familiar with already, um, this iAnnotate app and there are other annotation apps that are available but this has become pretty useful uh, in music because what you can do obviously is you can do a lot more than you can with desktops and laptops. Uh, annotating something like this is, can be pretty clunky, you know, creating boxes, adding in text boxes. It's sort of, it can be a bit cumbersome. So one, th one advantage that this provides is that, you know, you can have students who are, uh, can be listening to the music on their smartphones or whatever, and then they can be scrolling through the score bit by bit. Uh, one of the interesting things about this app is that you, can't, you can do more than just, uh, obviously, you know, highlight particular passages, circle them, mark them up. You can add these uh, nice little sound, uh, sound boxes here. So over here on the right, you can add your own little, see the microphone there? You can add your own little sound clip. And I I'm, I'm thinking this is something that I could um, integrate into an assignment of some kind, but what you can do is that if you want to memorize some of these, these themes. So here we have the finale of the Mozart Jupiter Symphony, very famous work, um, basically constructed around five main ideas, five main themes. And you can add in your own, you know, you can play them, you can sing them yourself, something like this. You could also add voice commentary um, if you have an idea and you want to get it down quickly, it's in your mind, you can obviously do that too with that function. Uh, and basically, uh, the, this is quite a useful app, I think, because what you can do is it encourages, um, it encourages students to go through and identify themes. Uh, and basically, what you can do is uh, it encourages more kind of close engagement, I think, with the score. So uh, I added in some more of these things here. Excuse the crackly singing, I've had a cold. <laughs> Sorry. Right. Uh, but th that's the kind of thing you can do. So, you know, students could do that on their own instrument, etc. Uh, and 
The reason why that's important for this piece, of course, is, um, well, I don't want to swell too long, but what you can do is you can use the scrolling feature here. These are long scores, right? These are not, um, you know, you'd ideally, students in the past would own these scores as hard copies, uh, but not as much now, I'm finding. And so this becomes important at the very end of this piece because all these need to come back and are superimposed on top of each other. It was the first time it had ever been done um, in the history of music. So this is obviously something you want to show students. You want to show them how these themes come together beautifully at the end. Uh, and you can colour code all the different um, features, obviously. And uh, I won't play the, play the end there because I think, you know, we'll probably have to move on soon. But um, I've, I've basically, some of my ideas for this are uh, that um, I develop an assignment in one of my either symphony classes or opera classes where students could either use their own tablets or if they don't have them, they can go to the Fondren iPad lab and use iAnnotate there. It's already pre-installed. Uh, it's not a free app. But, uh, uh, or we can actually, in, I think in Meadows, there's a few available for, for checkout. So... It's something I'm thinking about doing for um, assessment work, which I think is, is useful. Um, but, you know, you can also use this, as perhaps some of you already have, for obviously um, textual materials. So if I minimise that up. So, you know, for a journal articles, right, you can do exactly the same thing. You can mark them up. You can use colour-coded highlighting. Uh, you can have, you know, obviously print type on the right, on the, in the margins, and actually the easiest way to do that is by doing that and kind of adding in your own typewritten note there like that. Something like that, right? Uh, and also you can have these um, little post-it notes here which pop up like that if you want to have more detailed, uh, detailed annotations. And the same thing for underlining, you can do that here. So if you want to do a, you know, a skim and then a close read encourage students to do that. So that's just um, a couple of the ways I've been using this app. I've, I'm, I'm not the most experienced person with this particular app, but um, I think it's something that we can use in music and I think in other disciplines too where other media is involved that's available as PDFs, um, this kind of app is probably a fairly useful kind of thing to um, think about perhaps um, and get students uh, re-engaging with some of these electronic materials in ways if they have to do close readings or analytical work. So that's, that's about it. Um, does anyone have any questions? Yeah. Does the score have a developed kind of copyright? Yeah, uh, it, it depends on the publication year, where it was published, um, but that one that I just, the one I annotated up here, that's, that's under fair use technically. So, okay. uh, yeah, it does copyright. Have you ever tried it? to give students feedback on the papers they write for you. So for example, you could use that little recording thing to record a comment as opposed to scribbling madly in the margins and they can't read it. Would it work for that? Yeah, it would work for that. And in fact, you can, you can integrate this with Google Drive or Dropbox, your own Dropbox, and so then you can just share um, with the student. The only problem is they'll have to use iAnnotate to, see the, to, to get the, the sound. Uh, you can export PDF and they'll get all the annotations uh, and in some cases they'll get the pop-ups as well uh, but yeah I think it's something you definitely could use for that. I haven't used it personally for that but absolutely it would work. But they would have to send you a PDF not a Word document? Not necessarily I mean if you, if you converted it over uh, to a PDF um, and then you import it into iAnnotate um, you'd possibly you'd be able to do that I think uh, but there's a question of yeah, you could definitely use it if you're just doing simple annotations to get material back to students. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have one more question about that. Can you annotate with um, a stylus? Yeah, I can just actually use one. Um, although... Um, Would you remember why you answered the question and talk? I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think it works better. I mean, for me, the stylus is easier when marking up a score because it's just more precise. I, I, was, I got a really cheap stylus and it was like writing with my nose. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I have to spend, you know, I mean, to do that, on, or was it maybe it was just the program I was using? I mean, do, is yours one of those $30? I mean, it's not that expensive, but I know I'll use it, so. No, this is a pretty, pretty cheap one, but I think some of these other guys have got PCs have got nicer ones that have more fine point stuff. It doesn't damage the screen or whatever, but 
can get to the ones that yeah, are more amenable to the sort of thing. Yeah. Okay, thanks.